Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul. Hope you're having an amazing day. In this video, we're going to be discussing Zen 5. Zen 5, Zen 4 hasn't even launched yet, for goodness sake. This is true. But there are a number of very interesting things that I've been learning of AMD's future Zen architecture. And I'm sure we'll agree by the time we've finished this video that... Well, Zen 5 is perhaps even the biggest change in the Zen microprocessor architecture ever. And we're going to be discussing it right after this message from the video's sponsor. Did you just build a shiny new PC? Then you'll need a genuine copy of Windows 10 so you can personalize the system and of course get rid of that annoying activation watermark. We've partnered with WhoKeys to give you guys great discounts on Windows 10 keys and of course they can be fully upgraded to Windows 11 too. You can get 30% off using the coupon code RGT during checkout. I've purchased several of these keys in the past using a personal non-RGT affiliated account and they've worked flawlessly with quick delivery. If you want to pick up a copy of Windows for as little as $15 or a cheap and legit copy of Office, check the links out in the video description below. A few days ago, I did put out some preliminary Zen 5 information along with a whole bunch of other stuff like Nave 3 x and also various APUs. And we're going to be going over some of that information again, but I've also managed to establish a lot more clarification and other details. And of course, as usual, we'll be going over this like slide by slide. Now, I want to stress, of course, that this information is still pretty early, and some of it could pertain only to specific SKUs, and we'll be going more into that in just a moment, but let's start out, shall we? So, beginning first, core counts for the Ryzen processors will be doubling. So, we've discussed this several times on the channel previously, but from 16 cores, we're going to see up to 32 cores. Core counts for Epic and Threadripper will see a similar, that's an exact quote, the word similar, increase. I don't know the exact core count. I've heard everything from 192 to 256, so I'm just going to say 192 to 256 for this video. Then five cores are now using TSMC's 4NM process. One of my sources is adamant that it could be 3NM. This actually matches to what Grayman has said on Twitter. I believe it was Grayman. I may be misattributing that, but uh, they actually said it's going to be 4NM. One of my sources is uh, actually two of my sources, excuse me, are saying it's 4NM. One is still insistent it's 3NM. So perhaps there's still old information with the free NM source, or perhaps it could be specific SKUs or a refresh. I'm not sure yet. Uh, continuing on though, as we've got a lot more stuff to go through, the number of cores per CCX has apparently increased to 16. So this is double that of Zen 3 and Zen 4. There are large IPC gains, I'm hearing around 30% one T, so that's single thread. This is average performance increases. Basically, I'm averaging the performance that I've heard from several sources. One person said it's around 32%, another said it's 29%, so I'm going to average and say around 30%. Adding to this heterogeneous processors like APUs and basically those which are using the Zen 5 and low power Zen 4 cores, we'll discuss this further in just a moment, will really be pushing low power consumption as a primary feature. This is not surprising. AMD have done that with a plethora of Ryzen processors at this point for laptops, for example, but it's going to be doubled, tripled, quadrupled, whatever you want to say down for the next generation. Now, another very interesting thing that I was personally hearing about Zen five is that there are major changes to the cache structure and one of those is that l3 cache is no longer on the ccx itself the best way of describing this in a kind of a very simplified manner would be basically a chiplet so, i mean the, the easiest way actually is just visualize the 5800 x3d but while those cpu scores still have the l3 cache present on the ccx this is going to be just removed and basically 3d stacked now this vcache to my understanding, is most likely going to be utilizing an older, larger manufacturing process. I haven't had it confirmed which one yet, so 5 or 7 NM is likely. Obviously, this is almost certainly going to be using TSMC, but maybe they'll go with another company. I don't know. This is obviously for purposes like yields, costs, and so on and so on. The L2 cache is actually unified, though, across the entire CCX. So this means that all 16 cores access a shared L2 cache now. So, again, an easy way of describing this is kind of visualize how the L3 cache works, for example, on Zen 4. And you can basically apply this to the uh, L2 cache on Zen 5. 
And we've actually had numerous other architectures from other companies that have had unified L2 caches. So this is not like some incredible advancement that only AMD have thought of, but it does have a plethora of advantages, particularly now that core counts are increasing, of course, per CCX. Now, one source is insistent that the amount of cache has actually increased in total. However, the way it was worded, I'm not 100% certain how they mean this because again there are 16 cores right so um using zen 4 maths for example because each uh each zen 4 uh, cpu core has l2 cache of one megabyte so each private cache of l2 is one megabyte does that mean that zen 5 is 16 megabytes because 16 you know 16 cores and all and you're sharing that 16 megabyte you know that chunk if you will or does it mean that it's actually larger? So, for example, is it 32 megabytes of L2 cache shared between all of those cores? Just as an example figure. I'm not sure which one at the moment. Another smaller thing is that L1 caches themselves have seen big increases. This includes larger sizes as well as latency improvements. Obviously, again, this is going to be really important. This also kind of matches to what another source. I've only had one source tell me this so far. And that is that the um, future Zen 5 architecture is going to be really, really bandwidth dependent on DDR5. And that's one of the reasons that they're bolstering the caches. Again, this is not too surprising. Um, and I think we've already seen some of the advantages that tons of cache can have for the Zen arch architecture already, of course, with the 5800X3D, which I think is a really interesting case study of what can happen when you just take an established processor core and you just just add a crap ton of cash to it and it's actually really interesting if you guys you know have a look at some benchmarks or you have one of the processes as uh, technically available now and you kind of look at the scaling of what applications really do well um, and you can imagine in the future how this is going to perhaps even scale to you know larger number of cores it's going to be really interesting i figure um, particularly when we're talking about larger um, scale ccx's as well now, for the next slide, we're going to be discussing a bunch of stuff that I'm not as certain about because I've only, in some cases, had one source confirm a specific thing, um, or it could be pertaining only to one specific SKU. Nevertheless, I'm putting it out there because I think it will be fascinating to see how all of this stuff kind of lands in the next couple of years, as I'm sure we're going to get a lot more information over the next, you know, months or so. But anyway, so first things first. Um, there are NPUs as well as accelerator and machine learning, and this will become a really big deal for Zen 5. I can really imagine this to be the case. I mean, AMD are pushing the, you know, the acquisition of Zelenix at the moment, and you can start to imagine how a lot of that technology could be utilized in specific SKUs in the future. We've also had uh, AMD themselves officially confirm that things like accelerators are going to become a really big part of Ryzen's future. I think it was like Robert Halleck in an interview. I believe it was the five-year anniversary of Ryzen that he said this, but I'm not 100% certain. And so you can imagine how this is going to continue over the next couple of years, you know, dedicating a very small amount of die space relatively anyway to accelerate specific uh, specific uh, functions, for example. It's obviously it's not exactly like this, but you can kind of imagine how that's one of the reasons that smartphones uh, have such good performance relative anyway, you know, when you're talking about like cameras and all of this other stuff. So we can imagine how a similar approach could be used for a plethora of functions in the future. And obviously, as we start to move towards uh, a lot different gaming, you know, engines, like Unreal Engine 5 and all this other stuff, with crap tons of data being thrown around, you know, all of the different buses, you can start to imagine how a lot of this stuff could become even more important, like, you know, decompression blocks on the CPU and other things. I've been told that there are lots of improvements to the logical units as well as additional CPU instructions. Honestly, this just kind of makes sense. I did get a couple of specifics on that, but I'm going to hold off for now because quite frankly, I just, I want to try and get a little more clarification as to what is being done. But basically, to my understanding anyway, both the floating, floating point units, the integer units, basically pretty much everything has seen a major overhaul with Zen 5. And one thing that I learned quite early on is that a lot of folks at AMD basically were kind of looking at Zen 4 as like one person actually described it, quote, fat Zen 3. So pretty much you just take everything that's really good with Zen 
uh, free and then you just like throw everything up you know turn all the dials up to 11 and that's kind of what amd did with zen 4 whereas zen 5 is much more of like a ground up design it's certainly not the first time amd have done this you know where they basically i won't say go completely back to the drawing board but they do a lot of like fundamental tweaks to the architecture itself and i'm hearing that amd are a lot more excited honestly about zen 5 over zen 4 although zen 4 <laughs> is still going to be pretty good um, you know, IPC gains, clock frequency gains. I, I think we can all agree that it's going to be a pretty impressive architecture. I also want to mention that there will be a, a modest clock frequency gains. I've heard two to 300 megahertz, but these are really early targets. And we're not even talking about your like, engineering samples or early engineering samples. These apparently are just like early targets within AMD themselves. They may not hit those at all. It could be like, you know, clock speed regression. <laughs> it's very unlikely, but I'm just saying. Or it could be that they clock like an extra 1 million megahertz. Again, not going to happen, but you get my point. When we're talking about clock frequencies and targets this early, reality may not actually hit the expectation of AMD. Now, Another really big point of Zen 5 and the architecture is that it's also going to be really a big change in that it also has the big ELIS or heterogeneous, however you want to say, uh, philosophy that, AM, that uh, Intel, excuse me, have been employing as well as various other like cell phone manufacturers and so on for some time now. Basically, Zen 4 cores will be taking the place of the little cores, but with some changes. So I'm hearing that they're essentially a cut down energy efficient design, again, based on Zen 4. Allegedly, it will still handle SMT. A single source refutes this, but I don't know. I, it's not like SMT takes that much additional power, most likely in Ryzen, and I think they would probably want the additional thread count, but who knows, maybe that could be on a per skew basis. L3 caches, according to source 1, is significantly cut, and source 2 told me it was, quote, halved. Due to multiple reasons, Zen 4C is not currently planned, that's a quote, to be present on, quote, high-performance, end quote, CPUs, including Epic or Ryzen flagships. So this would mean that the Ryzen 9 8950X, for example, or whatever the equivalent is for the 5950X, it will not feature this. However, APUs and very energy-efficient CPUs those will actually feature the Zen 4 cores. So basically, AMD are going to be kind of bolting together processors and chiplets, if you will, pretty much based upon what the usage scenario is, and they will have a ton of flexibility. And this will also allow them to create very custom designs as well, pretty much dependent on what their customer would actually want. I think you can imagine that there's going to be a lot of flexibility here. I'm also hearing that AMD are going to be doubling down on ARM and, you know, its offerings in that arena and possibly pairing that with Zen cores. I'm still getting some information on that, so I'm just going to kind of leave that there and uh, maybe you guys can kind of do a little bit of investigation yourselves on that. Um, but yeah, I think that's just about it for this video. If you've enjoyed it, well, it's YouTube land. You know what to do. Leave a likey on the video. And uh, of course, subscribe for more of my ramblings. With that said, have an amazing day. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.